finally rebuilding the Cincinnati Bengals. They're a really solid team with some big-time superstar talent. Need a few more pieces to really complete the puzzle. And yes, of course, I'm a Giants fan. I chose a bad name. Let's just call it what it is. Uh, I know what the comments will say about how this is my real favorite team. And trust me, guys, fire away. It gets funnier the 7,000th time. But uh, let's go ahead and jump in. Rebuild the Cincinnati Bengals, my real favorite team. And let's, uh, let's see what we can do. This is the team. There are obviously a number of rumors about T. Higgins getting traded. However, not from the Bengals. They pretty much seem to say, hey, we're not trading T. Higgins. And it's going to be difficult to extend him. He's currently on the franchise tag. I've set up the entire team as it actually is. So we have everyone that needs to be here for the most part. Still waiting on Tanner Hudson to sign. That'll make a huge difference at tight end too. Brought back Trenton Irwin. But as you can see on offense, it is how it is. We need upgrades on the O-line. But brought in Trent Brown. Brought in Mike Gesicki. People say Gesicki for some reason. It is. It's Gesicki. I don't know what the, where people are getting Gesicki from. Zach Moss should be a decent addition to their team. Wide receiver three is a problem. Wide receiver three is a big problem. Joe Mixon, of course, on the Texans now. And defensively... It looks okay. They're really strong in the secondary. Geno Stone was a new addition, as was Von Bell. Still have Jordan Battle. I love Dax Hill. He's at Superstar Dev right now. I might end up moving him to corner. And he did play some corner at Michigan. He was a hybrid slot corner. Did play some boundary. Played some free safety. But Mike Hilton is the slot corner. And that's he's a really, really great one. DJ Turner, another Michigan man who I really, really liked in the draft. And Cam Taylor Britt. We don't really need another corner right now, but we have four solid safeties. So what do we do? Somebody might end up getting moved. It won't be Dax Hill. I love Dax Hill. He will be developed. But where? I think moving him to corner just doesn't seem to make a ton of sense to me right now with Mike Hilton. So I don't know what we're going to do yet. We're going to figure it out, though. Defensively, brought in Sheldon Rankins. But linebacker could be upgraded, as could defensive end, as could, I would say, yeah, a couple different positions on offense. And tackle, still maybe a need for the Bengals. We know about Orlando Brown Jr., right? They brought in Trent Brown. One-year contract, though. I don't think that stops you from drafting a tackle at 18. But it'll be interesting to see which direction the Bengals actually go with this rebuild. Of course, you expect the top QBs to be gone. But do any of the top receivers fall to the Bengals? And maybe it's obviously not Neighbors or Odunze or Harrison Jr., but maybe it's Brian Thomas Jr. or Adnai Mitchell available at 18 and the Bengals pull the trigger. That could be really, really interesting. So we'll see what happens. Maybe even Brock Bowers ends up slipping to them at 18. Maybe the Bengals even make a trade up for him. So many different possibilities for them in this draft. Should be really fun to find out what they do. And here in this rebuild, I don't know what I'm going to do. I would say I'm really strongly going to consider a receiver. Because if Brian Thomas Jr. is there or Adonai Mitchell, it's going to be in consideration without question. Still could address that later down the board. But we'll see what happens. And we could also consider a trade down as well. That's a possibility. I would say for the Bengals in this draft, you know, the world's kind of their oyster. Could go so many different directions, can do whatever they want, trade up or trade down. Have, you know, just the default picks here through the draft. Maybe I think a seventh because of Joe Mixon. But, I mean, this is, you know, pretty bare bones, pretty basic. We could move up or down, no problem. But the smart move is probably a tackle. Could be a receiver, though. Bears at number one. Go with Caleb Williams, quarterback USC. Not to be a big surprise there. Drake May at number two to the Commanders. At number three, I expect Jaden Daniels, but it's Marvin Harrison Jr. It's a possibility on draft night. We'll see what ends up happening. Dallas Turner to the Cardinals. He's off in the selection there. Elisa Fuaga to the Chargers. Another potential trade down spot. Giants address tackle. Titans go with Brock Bowers. We see that happen quite often. It will simulate to number 18 as Quinion Mitchell's off the board to the Jags. I think that's a possibility as well. And Malik Neighbors and Rome Adunze have both fallen 
to number 18. Oh, this, this makes it so impossible for me because that's just extremely unlikely to happen in real life. Extremely unlikely. So this is what happens. You know, I'm doing, you know, a more realistic rebuild of the Bengals. I'm using the real draft class with neighbors expected to go top five and a Dunze potentially in that range as well. They get to 18. Do I take the best player because they've, you know, decided to fall to me? Or do I go with something that feels more realistic, like Amarius Mims or Troy Fatanu? And that's a really, really tough question to answer because obviously these players are very, very good. But I'm gonna some of you are gonna be upset here. I just can't take them because they won't be here in real life. And if there was a chance that they would get here, I'd be like, okay, I can rationalize it. Neighbors, I do not think there is any chance he falls out of the top 15. And a Dunze, I think, yeah, I'd be shocked to see him fall out of the top 15. I just do not think it happens. So I just, I, I can't draft those guys there. I need them to go higher. We've got to toy around with the draft class, see if we can change the order, get those guys taken off the board earlier. I'm going to end up going tackle here. And because Trent Brown's on the team, we can draft a developmental offensive tackle with super high upside. It's the freak right tackle from Georgia, Amarius Mims. Actually, maybe even bigger than 6'7", 330 if we go off the combine and stuff. But he's a freak athlete, incredibly strong, quick feet, especially for his size. And that type of thing cannot be overlooked to tackle. You have a real developmental piece here. And I know neighbors, Adunze, how do I pass up on those guys? But Amarius Mims has absurd potential, and I think it's a legit possibility for the Bengals at 18. I do not think Neighbors or Odunze is a possibility at 18. Maybe if the Bengals trade up into the top 10, which I wouldn't expect them to, but I know it's like, oh, how do you pass on them here in Madden? But if I'm trying to make it feel more real, I just can't take those guys there. So hopefully you understand. Just couldn't do it. They're so good. How are they available? They shouldn't be. The Steelers surely will jump on one of these guys. Nope. <laughs> Malik Neighbors to the Dolphins of all teams at 21. I can see them taking a receiver. I mean, if Neighbors falls there, how do you not? Unreal. And Roma Dunze could fall out of the first round entirely. Why is he falling? This is unreal. Who did he kill? Is Roma Dunze wanted for murder? That's what I need to know. No way he goes past the Ravens pick, surely. Chiefs, they have to draft him. They go Kool-Aid McKinstry over Roma Dunze. He's available in round two. What is happening? I know it's a stacked receiver class, so you could expect some of these guys to fall a little bit, or they could just get drafted really early. But the receivers are all sticking on the board. I need to simulate one by one to see where Adunze ends up going, man, because Bo Nix to the Panthers. Why? Adunze ends up going to the Commanders to team up with Drake May. That's a nasty combo, but what is happening? Here we are in the middle of round two. Some very good receivers still on the board. We could certainly consider that, but I'm going to go with Braden Fisk. Super freak athlete on the interior defensive line. Plays very, very fast. And should be a really fun fit here. We need more of an explosive pass rusher. And I think Braden Fisk could end up being the guy. Again, the draft class is glitched. There's nothing I can do about it other than restart entirely. Which, you don't put like 25 to 50 hours overall into a draft class just to restart and do that again. I just don't have the time. Especially now during draft season. A lot of content to make. A lot of film to grind. It's just, it's just an impossible situation. So, um... It's not my fault, is what I can say. It's an EA problem. They fixed it if you restart, but not doing that at this point. So they didn't really, it's not really a fix. It's, uh, oh, it's, uh, oh, if you just redo all your work, then it's fixed. It's not fixed. That's just a new thing. Anyway, round three. I like the potential of Tez Walker here. We do need a receiver. Tez Walker ends up being the fit. Really good athlete again. Good speed down the field. Can especially win deep for a team. And that could be really fun here in Cincinnati. 
not drafting a ton of hidden development players because there are not a ton of hidden development players in this draft class. Make things feel a little bit more realistic, but still some talented players. Every receiver is just on the board. I mean, this is what? 12 receivers in a row? I didn't count exactly, but something very close to that if it wasn't. But what do we need here? Tommy Eichenberg could be interesting out of Ohio State. Get more depth at linebacker. That is a possibility. What's there on the O-line? I'm not really looking at a tackle, but something on the interior. So, Lamea from Utah. Brandon Coleman's a really good athlete. Interesting. Christian Jones could end up going day two. I don't love the talent available here, which means I think we play it smart. And I think we trade down maybe for future picks. We'll see if a team wants to offer us a future three. If they don't just want to outright do that, I think I can still go and get one. So let's go and make that happen. Trading a four and a five this year for a three next year for Minnesota. And that will pretty much end our draft. I'll let the CPU handle the day three picks and we'll see what they can bring in. Probably a receiver down the board based on how these guys are sticking. But there's nothing I can do about that in the draft class either. You know, I have these guys near the top. They're supposed to be drafted, but teams just don't care. And they take other positions because they already have receivers or whatever. But can never really have enough really good wide receivers. So it is what it is. The wide receiver position is so stacked in this draft class along with offensive tackle. Teams just don't really want to draft them here in Madden. We'll see what happens in real life. I expect a lot to go in the top 75. So, first round pick, Amarius Mims is a 74 overall, of course, with hidden development. Braden Fisk, 72. Big time developmental piece. Not going to start this year, but probably will next year. Tez Walker's a 73. Should be wide receiver three for us, honestly. And then brought in Brevin Span four to be tight end depth. Andrew Rame and Thomas Perkins on the guard. Is Thomas Perkins, I, I saw him last time. Is he a real guy? It's the second time we've drafted him. And I've, I've never heard the name. I don't think he exists. And he's got to be taken out of the class. <laughs> I don't know how he got pushed up from the undrafted section, but... All right. Dude, I swear, Geno Stone is like five foot six with 40 speed. How am I supposed to make a play? So small, so slow. He's like 5'10". I'd be shocked if his speed was even close to 90. Trenton Irwin is consistently just outrunning. Good drop, though. Thank you. Oh, my goodness. But this is so frustrating. Oh, that's beautiful. But he doesn't throw it, so... Now we need to make a play for gold. One rep remaining. Read it well. He's in front of me. Oh, you bitch. Same situation. We have a chance to be great that you ran it in. I need to commit outside there because if he runs a corner, I'm dead. How am I still on this drill, dude? Yeah, that, that route's tough to cover. Easy gold. Never in doubt. Never in doubt. Look at that coverage. <laughs> Sometimes this drill feels impossible. Sometimes. See, again, I didn't commit to the corner fully, and we're cooked. And that was pretty close coverage still. Actually, I think he did drop it, but... Or, uh, is out of bounds. But you really, you have to guess. And if you guess incorrectly, again, you're screwed. But we got gold. Doubled what we needed, and more. But it is what it is. They always break the hit stick, too. Doesn't matter. 86 speed for Geno Stone. He runs like I do in my dreams when I'm trying to run away from somebody. It's like moving in quicksand. It's unbelievably slow. 90 acceleration, though. He gets up to 86 speed very quickly. Wow. Uh, all right. Well, two-year deal for Geno Stone. I think he will end up being pretty good. Had a ton of interceptions this past year with the Ravens, right? But how will he play in simulation, and what is he going to do for us? Dax Hill... I don't know. I think he should play slot corner, but that's what Mike Hilton does. But also, Mike Hilton is just going to play in the outside here, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. He can't play on the outside. I just don't have the boundary corners. I don't have them. Dax Hill is athletic enough to do it. Has enough size to do it, I would, I would think. But 71 man, 71 zone, not good enough right now. 
Need to continue to develop him. Maybe... It's Von Bell, like Jordan Battle. What am I doing with those two, really? We don't need four safeties. Don't need them. Okay, here's what we're going to do. Geno Stone starts at free safety. Jordan Battle is going to be our backup strong safety. Von Bell is going to be the backup free safety. Jordan Battle will play when Dax Hill moves to slot corner. And we're going to try and focus on getting a boundary corner. Either this season, during the season, but probably not. But this offseason is when I'm kind of looking to target that. So this is how we're going to set up the defense. Geno Stone, Von Bell. Bang. And then Jordan Battle under Dax Hill. Dax Hill slot corner. DJ Turner, CB4, technically, I would say. Mike Hilton has to play on the outside, even though he's not a boundary corner. But that's okay. Texas legend Joseph Osai hook him. You didn't think I wasn't going to get the horns up, did you? Of course. Ooh, and Amarius Mims is going to get some development here. Go pass blocking. I appreciate you, Trent Brown. Let's do pass block finesse. He's already as powerful as they come out of the draft. Plus three to pass block finesse. Okay. I like improved rookie for my developmental offensive tackle. I have not seen that before, but I like it. And then Joseph Osai. Would love to develop him. But, I mean, they're athletically, the profile's great. Right? But technically, power moves, finesse moves, block shedding, play rec, all that stuff is not so great. Marius Mims gets 4,500 XP. Thank you, Trent Brown. I mean, he could be pushing 80 overall at some point in the next couple of seasons, which doesn't sound crazy, but I'll tell you, for an offensive lineman, it is crazy. Those guys just do not get developed in, in game. They just don't. So we could, you know, toy with the XP slider, you know, boost up uh, offensive line development. But going to keep it as is. Everyone always asks, what are your settings for the XP sliders? You know, all the new settings they've changed. And I, I haven't really played with any of them. And I think a part of that is that there's no setting to import your previous settings. So I have to, I would have to do it every single time, which I, I'm sure it wouldn't take very long. But also, would I have to talk about it every rebuild? And most people are not interested in that. And I don't know. Some people might consider it cheating. I'm just looking to avoid all that. So it is what it is. Maybe next year. Maybe some rebuilds this year. I don't know. But maybe next year. Like, how great of a feature would it be quality of life wise start franchise with your previously saved settings like you could make your own default settings that feels awesome but i think i saw a tight end here at the top of the draft 65 236 from vanderbilt i mean we could use a tight end here would we draft one in the top 10 well we're unlikely to be picking in the top 10 but we could potentially move up I mean, you get a tight end prospect in the top 10. You're thinking about potentially a generational type player. Strengths of the class, wide receiver, right tackle, free safety. Uh, I mean, we could consider receiver. Probably not tackle or safety, though. Let's look at, let's do wide receiver and, of course, as always, cornerback. What are the odds that I have a scout that specializes with corners and tight ends? <laughs> what a weird mix. Why is Evan McPherson refusing to look at me? I've never seen this before. I've seen weird glitches, you know, in this screen where maybe it's a black screen. Maybe their face looks like an android. Maybe they have two bodies fused together like the human centipede. But Evan McPherson's just, just turned. It's looking the other way. All right. Midseason mark sitting at four and two. Ravens five and one in the division. And they're a team that always plays really, really well in simulation as well. So we do not have that going for us in the division, unfortunately. But this is a building year. Even though we still can compete and are competing, this is a building year. We're going to need to extend T. Higgins. I decided not to trade him, obviously. 48 million in cap space. T. Higgins. Very affordable for how good he is. Only an 86 overall in the game, I guess. In my mind, he's more of like an 89 overall type player. But only 85 overall. 
when we started this thing. And T. Higgins wants more money. Okay, who else? Von Bell. Von Bell I don't really want. I don't know what his purpose is. Like, why do I keep Von Bell? Depth. A one-year deal worth close to $5 million. Von Bell is back. I can do a one-year deal. Don't feel bad about that. Mike Gesicki, I think we let go. Mike Hilton puts us in a tough spot, but Trent Brown is the real weird one. Do I want to pay him close to $20 million on an extension? How locked in are we with Orlando Brown Jr.? Because that's somebody I'd be more willing to let go. But I think it's going to be still like that four years, like... 25 million a year or whatever he signed. So, yeah. Three years remaining. He's just not that good here. 80 overall. Still room to get better, I guess. But he's not going to develop very much. That puts me in a tough spot. Trent Brown, 88 overall. Probably too good to let go, right? And then maybe, maybe Amarius Mims moves to guard. That's a possibility. Don't really want most of these guys. We can pick up the fifth-year option on Dax Hill. Evan McPherson I would probably like to re-sign. It's a little bit more expensive than what I want to pay a kicker. But he's going to want four mil plus per year. And I don't really know that I want to do that. Trent Brown, Mike Hilton's tough. Mike Hilton's going to have to go. I just, I just don't need him, is what that comes down to. If he was like an 85 overall, maybe i make an exception. But he's only going to regress at 30 years old. I have someone that can play slot corner. Von Bell is coming back for another year. I just don't need it. Trent Brown, three-year deal, worth as much as $20 million, And Trent Brown is back, per year, I should say. And then the rest, we don't really have a ton of money. T. Higgins will end up re-signing, I'm sure. Going to up the money a bit on T. Higgins. And T. Higgins has decided to re-sign. Massive extension, but I think it's going to be well worth it to secure our top two wide receivers. Still could take a third, right? Have Tez Walker. Maybe that's somebody we look to develop. But I'm not going to completely, you know, forget about the possibility of a receiver high in the draft. Speaking of high in the draft, here's a former first-round pick, Miles Murphy. I'll be honest, kind of forgot about him. Kind of forgot about Miles Murphy. Really solid athlete. I could see him take a big step in real life at some point. In the game, play rec and awareness are quite low. Does have star development, but he has a long way to go in terms of development. And I don't know that he's going to be able to do much. Only 22 here. Star dev. Some good things to work with. Hmm. I don't know. It's going to be tough to get him to be a reasonable, you know, starting level player. Could I get him up to an 80 in two years? I think that's a possibility. I'm at least going to make him back up left end and right end and each of those pass rush spots, try to increase his snap count. But right now, he's raw as a player, to say the least. I'll probably even make him third. I have Braden Fisk. Never mind. But take Cam Sample out, Jeffrey Gunner, and move in Miles Murphy. Seven and two, though. Having a great season. We've overtaken the Ravens for the division here. And I am curious to see what this draft class actually looks like. So this tackle looks like he'd be great. Looks like he could be awesome. But we don't really need a tackle. I want to find out about Donovan Wilson. And that's a player we would have to make a move up for. But I wouldn't totally discount that possibility. And then maybe look at some of the outside linebackers. Again, it looks like we would have to move up a long way to get some of these players. Casey Parham could be good. And we did make the playoffs 11-6. and six. Chargers also went 11-6. and six. So did the Ravens. Everyone going 11-6 and six here in the AFC. Joe Burrow with a decent season. Throws for over 4,000 yards, 31 touchdowns to 12 picks. Great in real life numbers, but I've seen better in the game. Zach Moss crushed it. Over 1,100 yards rushing, 14 TDs. About 4.5 yards per carry. And I think he's going to have a pretty good season in Cincinnati. I, I think he's going to be equally productive as Joe Mixon was as a runner. That would be my expectation. We'll see. T. Higgins crushed it. Tez Walker as a rookie. Averaged 15 yards per catch. 10 touchdowns. 69 catches. Nice. 
than Jamar Chase. Led the team in catches, but not yards or touchdowns. But a very well-rounded year for the receivers. Great offensive production all the way around. And then defensively, if I could get to it here, three triple-digit tacklers, including Dax Hill, who had eight TFLs. 20 for Sheldon Rankins, 18 for Trey Hendrickson, 16 for B.J. Hill, 14 for Hubbard, and 10 for Pratt. Eight sacks for Hendrickson led the way. Didn't really get a ton of pressure. I think it's pretty clear we are missing, you know, those top-tier pass rushers at this point, other than Trey Hendrickson. He's in that range. Logan Wilson, four picks, three for Hilton and Hill. And I like where we are. I mean, we're primed for a first-round exit just because whenever we feel too good, you know, the fact that the Chargers won 11 games is surprising to me. But, all right, they're playing well. We have to play in a wild card game after a winning 11. That sucks, but it happens, especially now with 17 game seasons. We will see if we can knock out the Chargers. They're not a highly rated team. And we are headed home. That's classic Bengals, dude. I mean, is there anything more classic than a Bengals first round exit? A Chargers choke. But it didn't happen today. And the Cowboys beat the Dolphins at the Super Bowl. Lamar Jackson wins MVP. No. Uh, what team am I doing? No Bengals in there anywhere. Although maybe Offensive Rookie of the Year for Tez Walker. Because Vikings, you get NFC Offensive Rookie of the Year. Well, we play in the AFC, so it's a possibility for Tez Walker here in Madden. He does have a skill point. Show me abilities. He's up to Superstar Dev. Offensive Rookie of the Year for Tez Walker. Okay. We are in business. Return man. I don't know he's doing anything. All right. Great stuff from Tez Walker. And now we don't need a receiver. We extend T. Higgins. We have Tez Walker. We have Jamar Chase. It's a really, really strong trio. Just got to focus on O-line. Unless we move Amarius Mims to guard, which is seeming likely at this point. And... A lot of things on defense. Pass rush is crucial. Dax Hill up to superstar X-Factor? You think I'm getting rid of Dax Hill? There's no way. But I'm also not going to pick up the fifth-year option on him. I want to extend him. But ah, we had an extra year here. He's not going to be expensive now. Now nah, I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait. Gasicki up to superstar. Mike Hilton up to superstar. Akeem Davis Gay, they're up to Gar, uh, to Star, Gar, yeah, that's what he's up to. Okay, we actually have a lot of free agents in here. I'm gonna have to let almost everybody in here walk. Hilton's tough, but we just can't afford to pay him with our cap room and based on the positions we need. I guess I'm targeting tight end in the draft, so Gusicki's gotta go. Maybe just picking up the fifth-year option on Hill is smart. No, I'm gonna extend him, because I think it's gonna be cheaper. Joseph Osai is gonna have to go. BJ Hill, I don't really want to pay $10 million per year. But Rankins is going to be expiring. I think we just try to take the money down and bring BJ Hill back for another year. Exactly what happens, but not a lot of money. Davis Gaither will walk. And we will look to upgrade linebacker in the draft. McPherson, little extension. Nope, not going to happen. But it is going to happen. Because I can franchise tag him for a year. Probably a little bit too expensive. But I want to keep him around. I wasn't really planning on spending any money in free agency anyway. So we're going to be fine. I will see if I can save money. You know, looking in team salary. See if we can save a little bit here or there. And we probably can somewhere. Sam Hubbard. Major cap casualty. I don't think anyone's going to be interested in him. I'll look around. We are getting some offers on him actually. Yeah, let's get Tier Tart. Sam Hubbard, straight up trade pretty much for Tier Tart. Pick up a pick in the process. Tart has a chance to start at defensive tackle for us. Only a one-year deal remaining, but... Good addition. And then Sheldon Rankins could potentially be moved. But 3-4 defense, also an interesting possibility. Loading up on the interior because... Trey Hendrickson could either go out to outside linebacker... Or just stick at defensive end. He would be fine there in Madden. At outside linebacker, we don't have anything. But again, we can kick Hendrickson back. Logan Wilson and Jermaine Pratt on the inside. And then we don't need a linebacker. We just need pass rushers. And then Miles Murphy, of course, could kick out to outside linebacker as well in that range. It's just, it's a possibility. 
That's all I'll say. It's a possibility of what could happen. It's a very interesting team right now. But Hendrickson saves his money. So we had to do it. I was going to cut him. I might as well get Tierra Tart, right? And very cheap deal. Nick Scott. I feel like he might have been cut in real life. Well, I'll do it now anyway. Anyone here in free agency? St. Brown, no chance. To a no, obviously. JOK. Ooh, but I, I just can never sign any of these outside linebackers in free agency because I'm not going to pay them as edge rushers. I know I complain about it every rebuild, but it's a very annoying thing, so I'll continue. JOK is not getting $23 million per year. He's not an 87 overall edge rusher. He's an off-ball linebacker that happens to be an outside linebacker here by, you know, specific classification. They need to mix them up. Like, in free agency... Call them edge. And then when they sign to your team, they can be a different position or you set it yourself. That might increase the, like, skill gap with Madden. But if, you, if, if, if at this point, you don't know what an edge rusher is, I mean, you don't you don't belong to be playing franchise mode. I don't know. Is that a stretch? I know it's a video game. It's, it's like casual. And you're, are you turning away casual players if you call it edge? Then what is edge? I know about a defensive end. People will learn. They're like, all right. I've offered Marquise Bell a contract or Marquise. So Marquise Bell is a good insurance policy if I can't draft a linebacker. Any good boundary corners in here? Stefan Gilmore for a year? If I can get him on a really cheap contract, sure. But not, not a deal breaker if we don't bring him in. I kind of don't expect to, but nobody's offering him. So, I guess there's a chance. Vikings trying to bring in Stefan Gilmore, but they can't. He's headed to Cincinnati for a year. And that's one of those players that has been at the top of his game for a while. And you probably just don't realize just how many teams Stefan Gilmore has played on. Especially if it's a new team in 2024. He started his career, uh, of course, you know, drafted out of South Carolina. Been on the Panthers, been on the Patriots. Has been on the Colts, been on the Cowboys. Started his career in Buffalo, and then it was Defensive Player of the Year with the Patriots, Panthers for a year, Colts, Cowboys. You just typically don't see one of the top players at the position be passed around as much as Stefan Gilmore. It's kind of like the Brandon Cooks of corners, but Gilmore obviously had higher highs than Brandon Cooks did. Okay, John Bell, top five talent, last player of the top 50. Looks bad, but... I mean, if he's a top five player, do we take him down the board? Makes me worried about the actual strength of this draft class if he's a top five player. Interesting. Donovan Wilson expected to go at number four. So we would have to move up quite a ways if that's going to be what we decide to do. But I'm not opposed to it. Donovan Wilson is a true top five talent. Ran in the four fours. I mean, this is my Vernon Davis. It's my Kyle Pitts. Donovan Wilson, not to be confused with safety Donovan Wilson, would be such an incredible addition to the offense. You know, they say you're never just one piece away, but we could be just a tight end away. And if we can bring in a generational type tight end, that could be incredible. I will say Casey Parham down the board looks awesome. Like, not a super freak athlete, just a really solid all-around player. But... Wilson at the top looks special. It's going to be worth it. We're going to move up a lot, by the way. It's going to be like, how are you doing all that for a tight end? But you know what? It's going to be worth it. Trading a first this year and next year, a third this year. We have two of them. And a third in 2027 for the number four overall pick. And then we are taking a tight end, a not premier premium position in the top five and not only are we doing that but we traded all the way up to get him he looks unreal it's worth it for a potential generational player a short a medium and i'm assuming a deep route running i can't find it oh top right a deep route running a catch in traffic a catching a run block finesse a spectacular catch where's just regular catching that's an a2 catch i mean he's unbelievable 
91 speed at 6'5", 236, 88 acceleration and agility, 84 change of direction and jumping. He's unbelievable. I had to. I had to. You understand. I Surely you understand. I can't leave generational players on the board. I guess I don't know if he's for sure generational, but he sure looks it. Sure looks like he could be. And then John Bell is on the board. I don't really need wide receiver. But I'm only a man, right? Am I capable of leaving a top five talent on the board here late in the second round? I'm not sure I am. I wanted a boundary corner, but not sure anyone fits the bill. Maybe Tyreek Watts. Ugh. He looks okay. Roger Kennedy looks like a pretty solid linebacker. Wish I knew a little bit more about him. But looks like a great option. And who knows if he's still going to be on the board next time we pick. Probably not. But, who? Caleb Vickers. We could still use a defensive tackle. He's 355. A power moves B tackle. A play rec. Ooh. A bunch of big D tackles here. Okay. Let's think about this. What is the best move for us? I'm really starting to consider a 3-4. I just feel like we have the personnel. I'm going to take a top five player. That is just extremely valuable. Top five in the draft. Could be a running back for us, to be honest. 5'11", 196. Undersized, no question. But... I mean, that's like Devon Achan, right? He's very close to that. Jameer Gibbs, very close to that. Achan, 5'9", 188. We're going to take John Bell, and I think we're going to move him to running back. Because we could use one outside of Zach Moss. A ball carry version, a break tackle, a juke, a kick return, a medium route running. That's actually pretty sick. Unreal receiving back. Only normal development for a top five player in the draft. But I think he's going to be extremely valuable for us. And now... I'm considering trading up in the draft again because we saw a defensive tackle we really liked. We saw a linebacker that looked quite good. And where are those guys? So the linebacker, I'm okay to miss on. Okay. But the defensive tackle, I don't really want to. The linebacker, Roger Kennedy, is supposed to go in about 20 picks. And then the defensive tackle is not for a while. 42 picks. Can I safely simulate to the third round? I don't I don't think so. We'll see. It was Roger Kennedy. I don't want to be heartbroken here. But I think maybe maybe the Steelers pick. We have to move up 20 picks. Now oh, the Steelers are in the division. I think I'm actually going to pass on that for that reason. Don't take a defensive tackle at Pittsburgh. You don't need one. Do anything else. Tight end. Not as good as the one we drafted. Okay, I am trading a three and a five this year as well as Sheldon Rankins. Final year of his deal, of course, signed a two-year deal in real life with the Bengals. But we just don't need him. Again, final year of his deal. I'm about to take a replacement defensive tackle. Chad Bigby, uh, Bigby looked great as a deep threat, but of course, really, really don't need a receiver at this point. But I'm sure a team's going to get a really nice steal there. But we could use someone actually under contract. And that is where Caleb Vickers comes in. Only 6'1", but 355. C block shed, A power moves, B tackle. Elite strength and acceleration. He's so slow, but he's not going to be there to be a big pass rusher. But he does have A power moves. 97 strength, 86 acceleration. Only normal development against Stings. But he should be very good. We're going to draft a uh, linebacker here, Dwayne Moreland. Looks okay. Needed depth. And this is how things went. Donovan Wilson is an 80 overall. That's a free pickup. Deep route running is pretty good at 66. Run block's not so bad at a 60. 85, spectacular catch. Route running's already great. He is already the number 21 ranked tight end. It's in the top 7% of the league. And, of course, he's only 22 years old. He's never played a snap. He's going to be nasty. John Bell is a 76 overall. Playmaker archetype. His route running is actually very nice. Not so great deep. Only 67 carrying. That scares me. 
but I might just move him to running back anyway. And he's a 79 overall there. Just please don't fumble. Caleb Vickers is a 73. I was hoping for Hidden Dev. He looks pretty awesome. Blockshed could be a bit higher, right? But 81 power moves. And then the rest of the draft did not go especially well. But that's okay. I think we got the number one overall player in the entire draft. Not Derek Ellison, but Donovan Wilson. And we didn't. The number one overall player was a right guard, Wyatt Thompson, 81. And then John Bell, I guess, number two, up to a 79. But yeah, the whole class was not especially good. Really just not very good. This is what the offense is going to look like. I'm expecting big things again. And then defensively, you know, it's not great. The defensive line could be better. BJ Hill, of course, Vickers, Fisk, Tart, all in there. Miles Murphy kind of forced to start at left end at this point, so we need a breakout. Defensive backfield still looks very good. I have Stefan Gilmore, of course, for a season. And this is the way things are going to look for the specialists. Fisk, rush D tackle, linebackers, you guys know. But Bell, third down running back, Zach Moss, power back. I am going to start Bell as our primary running back. Now, the carrying concerns me, but everything else is so elite that I'm hoping he just doesn't take very many hits. I don't know. It, he's going to fumble the ball, but we already don't see that many fumbles in simulation, so I'm hoping, all right, if you fumble two or three times, we can live with that. So that, that's just how it's going to be. And we are two and five. Offense is ranked 25th. Our defense is barely any better. And this is not what I was hoping for for this season. Steelers 6-1, and one, Ravens 5-2. and two. Seems like maybe we're just not winning the close games this year. Because we were on a real run last year. I think we were 7-1, 7-2 and, one, seven and two at one point maybe. But when you start the season with four straight losses, it's going to be tough to have a good record. So maybe there's room for improvement there. I mean, there certainly is. See what happens in the second half of the season, but this is not good. We have 116 million in available salary cap, and that's because we have some really big players to resign. Jamar Chase, Dax Hill, Trey Hendrickson, Dino Stone, Cam Taylor Britt, Jermaine Pratt. It's actually not quite as bad as I thought. Okay, we should be able to do this. I would say Jamar Chase might be looking for 30 million a year, and it's gonna essentially be in that range. A six year contract, same money. Huge, but Jamar Chase returns. Dax Hill, as I mentioned, was never going to be all that expensive. He plays safety. They're, they're just not highly valued. Up the money a little bit. And Dax Hill is back. That's a huge addition to our team. Trey Hendrickson for three years. I would do... I would do three years. I do want to take the money down slightly. And Trey Hendrickson returns. 60 mil now. Geno Stone is still good. And he's not very expensive. 10 mil per year. Geno Stone is back for five years. Cam Taylor Britt is one of the few boundary corners we have. He's not very expensive either. But he's not super interested in being here. So we might have to offer him more money if he's going to come back. Jermaine Pratt, I'm kind of on the fence about. 29 years old. Tierra Tart, we absolutely don't need. Marquise Bell, I think, should return. Maybe we move him to inside linebacker for the negotiations. Von Bell can probably walk. Alex Kappa. A little bit too expensive to be Alex Kappa, I would say. We'll see. I'm not going to make any decisions about the rest of these players right now. We'll just wait. And the decisions will be made probably uh, maybe a couple weeks, maybe in the offseason. We'll see. I need this season to get turned around first and foremost. The Ravens are always a problem. Well, midseason mark, Donovan Wilson is revealed to have Superstar X Factor. Not a super big surprise considering how good of a prospect he looked to be. Yeah, he is unreal. Well, we lose a close one to the Ravens in Week 8. It's not great. I mean, this is going to be a losing season, surely. We'll try and re-sign Cam Taylor Britt. He just wants a little bit more money, which we can do. We have the money to afford. CTB. Jermaine Pratt. It's not terribly expensive, but also isn't especially good. He's not going to sign this. Yeah, I don't know what we do about that just yet. Marquise Bell. I'd have a little bit more interest in, but again, I would like to move him to inside linebacker for the negotiation to pay him like his position actually 
indicates he should be paid. Alex Kappa, if he signs this, fine. All right, he's back. 13 million, a little bit too much, but we can live with it. And we went 6 and 11. Well, at least we still have our first round pick. No, we don't. We traded it to get a tight end. Okay, well, our offense really struggled. Our defense was bad. A little bit of a setback here in year two. Joe Burrow looked better numbers wise. Rushing, ooh. Only one fumble, but John Bell struggled as a rookie. 52 power back might have something to contribute there. Maybe he's more of a change of pace guy and that would be okay. Not like Zach Moss lit it up either in his attempts. Okay, so no running game definitely hurt us. Donovan Wilson had a very good rookie year. The receivers still are playing so well. Maybe we just couldn't find the end zone for one reason or another. We are still getting no pressure on the QB. We got to figure it out. This was a really bad year, too. We were near the bottom of the league for sacks, too. I, I need more pressure. Buffalo. Maybe the Buffalo defense is the way to go. Cowboys beat the Bills in the Super Bowl. Dak wins league MVP and Super Bowl MVP. What a year for the Cowboys. Man, video games are fun. Donovan Wilson may have won AFC Offensive Rookie of the Year, and he did. Of course, not an award in real life, but we, we like it here in Madden. Never mad about more XP. So Donovan Wilson crushing it. Was it worth the trade-up? Well, here's your argument, right? Does one generational tight end account for two good players at two different positions when you didn't have to trade all the way up to four? Is he impactful enough? Well, he won Offensive Rookie of the Year, so pretty good rookie year, but there was no team success. It's kind of bizarre. Like, the numbers on offense looked pretty good. We didn't run the ball well, but we just couldn't score many points, and then the defense was bad. That's where we need to improve the most. Miles Murphy up to superstar dev. Okay. Why? He had, like, three sacks, maybe. He just got it. Well... I'm, again, I'm not complaining. I guess we can pick up the fifth-year option on him. That could be big for his development. He's 24 years old. Jermaine Pratt, though. Uh, I just don't know if this makes sense. Nine million a year. All right, Jermaine Pratt is back. And then Marquise Bell. We moved to middle linebacker. He should be more willing to take a lower deal, but he wants to be in the Super Bowl chase, and we're an underdog right now. Use code Bengal on Underdog Fantasy. What? Actually, though, you can get a deposit match up to $100. And we're going to let everybody else walk here. $21 million. Evan McPherson's in there as well. We franchise tagged him, but we're just going to extend uh, an offer to maybe him or another kicker in free agency. Need to save a little bit of money. $21 mil in available salary cap. It was up very slightly here in the free agent week. We need to get better. Offensive line's an issue. Alex Kappa, yeah, for one more year. There's not really a lot of money to be saved unless we restructure with our quarterback, maybe. Where is our quarterback? Oh, geez. Who's being sorted by savings? <laughs> I'm like, where is Joe Burrow? I just didn't read the second one. I was. Pretty confused for a second. Uh, not going to restructure right now. We'll see what's in free agency first, and then maybe we'll have to, maybe we don't. No point in offering Joe Tooney. We just don't need to pay a guard that much. What else? Not really a lot here. Jamison Williams would be cool. Keaton Mitchell, but we don't really need to draft. Kair Elam, not... Super expensive. So we're looking for a center. I saw a good one in the draft, but in the first round, we'd have to move up. And then defensively, and there's good corners in the draft too. We just don't really have the picks. Our defense needs to improve. We need a true difference maker, but Miles Murphy getting superstar dev makes me hesitant uh, to move off of him. Fisk and Vickers are two new D, uh, new D tackles. Remember, traded Rankins, Tart, who we traded for, gone. BJ Hill gone, doesn't make sense to pay. We need to draft a linebacker, a corner, and a center. 
But we don't have the picks. I don't know how we're going to handle this. Take a look at the corners here, because there were a couple of good ones down the board. Trevor Motes out of Texas. Hook him. Top five talent. We could get in position. Keith Durant, round one. Ben Dupree, round one. We can take a corner down the board. Just not too far. We're going to have a pretty high pick in the second round. Trevor Motes is an option, and I would not be afraid to trade up, obviously. You guys have seen it happen before. We'll need a linebacker. But, ooh, Devontae Fuller, please be athletic. Yes, okay. That could be an answer at linebacker for us. Landry Guyton, elite speed at middle linebacker. Only deep play rec. Developmental piece. It could be available down the board. Left outside linebacker. It's not like the biggest need in the world. But it's a possibility. Like, we, we need someone to be there, right? Alex Wojciechowski is a speed rusher. Still potentially need that, but I don't think we're going to be able to swing at this draft. Dean Swift was the uh, center I saw, but definitely not going to be in play for us in the first round. I think we'd be uh, more be looking at Peter Weatherspoon from FSU. Looks to be an elite athlete. Okay. We might be able to handle our needs in this draft. Running back, they're just never especially good. Occasionally you get a really good one, but it does seem to be a rarity. If they don't have, you know, really good juke or spin, they're probably not worth drafting. We saw in Dicker the kicker. Hook him, of course. Tommy Townsend we're working on. Nicobe Dean as well. I don't know. There just didn't seem to be many great fits for us in free agency. And I'm not sure the draft is going to be a whole lot better with no first or third round pick, if I recall. So we are in trouble. Gonna have to certainly, you know, move up and down the board and some probably a lot of up. And Trevor Motes is expected to go at 14. That means he is not a possibility for me, probably. Oh, elite speed as well. How can I make that happen? It's really, it seems unlikely. Keith Durant expected to go at 23. Ben Dupree. Maybe in relation to Rajon Debris. Expected to go 26. Uh, it's going to be tough. Round two, pick eight. That's where we are. It's, it's going to be tough. Devontae Fuller looks great. Landry Guyton, more athlete than anything. Peter Weatherspoon looks very good. Didn't really look at Patrick Davenport too much, but I just, I don't know. I think we're going to stick with where we are at running back. I want to get in position for the corner. But how do we get the other players we need? It's a tough spot. All right, we are making a big trade up. Two first round picks, 2027, 2028, and a second. Really going full in. Think about the Rams. Uh, this, this feels like a trade up for Marcus Davenport, if you remember what the Saints did. But we are moving to number 14. I figured if we were going to move up to 23, we might as well move up to 14 for a better player. And I expect that corner to be on the board. And let's see, where is he? Trevor Motes, expected to go at number 14. Elite speed. We really need a true CB1. I hope Trevor Motes is that guy. Very good athlete. Hidden development. Probably going to be our CB1. It just... We put ourselves in a really tough position. And I'm, you know, I'm vacating future picks. But this is our window to be good. It's, you know, we're trying to keep this team together. It's not easy. We were obviously not as good as I thought we were going to be this past season. So, you know, changes had to be made. We got to get aggressive. And with a second round pick, we could potentially recoup a first round pick next year from a team like Buffalo. But I don't know that I want that. I know that seems crazy, but we'll see. The trade I've decided to do is this second round pick or a second from Buffalo this year and a second next year. So we get a pick back, no first rounder next year, but now at least we have a second. We move all the way to the back end of the second round, but I think that puts us in a better position to get better, which is what we're, you know, obsessed with, obviously. That's the entire point of doing a rebuild video, is making the team extremely competitive. It is a good team already, no question, but we didn't have our success in 2025. So how can we get better? That trade makes us better.
We move out of that first spot. I think we draft Devontae Fuller here. Only normal deve uh, development at linebacker. A little bit upsetting. He, how does he have A hit power, A play rec, A tackle, B zone coverage pursuit, A block shedding. And he's just, he's a normal dev player. He looks unreal. Very unfortunate. And then in the third round, I'm really hoping that center is still available. That's my big plan, is draft the center. And now we have a team. Peter Weatherspoon, hidden dev, hopefully. He's got unbelievable athletic testing. Skills-wise, he's great. This is a steal. Hidden development, only 85 strength, but 85 acceleration, great speed. That's a center. That's what we like. Someone maybe is a little bit more nimble, but can really move. Jason Kelsey made a career out of it. Although I, I would not say Jason Kelsey lacked strength. I'll say that. Landry Guyton, though. Do we take a chance on him? It's either that or trade down. And it's down the board a lot. Hold on. If he gets my fifth round pick, we'll draft him. But I'm trading down here. I think the future picks are going to be more valuable. The Bears. Ooh, Seahawks could be bad. The Vikings. That's a 2028, though. The Bears are offering me... I don't want that. Let's do the Seahawks 2027 third rounder. So that's next year we get a third round pick again. Recouping some of our draft picks for trading up. Kind of the smart thing to do. And drafting this linebacker is not going to be make or break. But I do hope he's still available. Did look very interesting, but is off the board. So we'll probably trade down again maybe for a future four. And I will see you guys at the end of the draft. Draft recap. 78 overall for Trevor Motes. I would say that's worth the trade-up. 82 man, 78 zone. We needed like a true boundary corner, and I think that's Trevor Motes. Devontae Fuller's a 74. Peter Weatherspoon's a 73. The draft went well for us. We even got a backup quarterback. But, uh, you know, nothing exceptional. Matt Stewart was the number one overall player in the class at 80 overall. Yeah, it did look very good. Not the freakiest athlete, but does everything else pretty well. And then I think we actually got the second highest rated player in the class at 78 overall. And was it worth the trade-up to move up to 14? I think it was. Mitch Clayton ends up going at 19. I mean, Durant went at 23 and was two overall points lower. I, I guess that would have been fine, right? But we need somebody that was a little bit better. Dupree's at 75. The only thing I'm super interested in seeing is going to be that linebacker that went probably in the fourth round. Round four, pick 24. So didn't really have a good chance to get him. Only normal dev, but looks amazing. Block shed's a bit low, but hit power, speed, acceleration, everything else looks crazy. Would be a really fun player to use if you're actually playing the games in franchise, but since we don't typically do that here, Madden, rebuild season, you know, uh, doesn't really make a huge difference. What can I do here? I like the offense. Running back may be an issue, right? You can go sign a power back. The defensive line could be better. I think the trade-up for Moats was smart. Linebacker is fine. It's really just, we're, we're missing that upper echelon pass rusher on the other side of Trey Hendrickson. And that's a bit of an issue right now. I hope our defense will be better, but I can't guarantee it and then uh, we do need a better backup running back Stefan Gilmore would be good depth AJ Dillon be quite the power back addition short yardage all right welcome on in this is the team for 2026 looks pretty good AJ Dillon was our big acquisition I guess corner moats of course CB2 but all right we'll see what we can do we could always make a move at the midseason mark. That's a possibility, right? But hopefully, our record is actually good at that point. Well, four and three could be better, could be worse. Our offense is 18th. Our defense is 21st, yet we're still above 500 somehow. So we're managing to win some of these games. Just, I, you know, four and three in those rankings doesn't bode especially well. Close loss to the Falcons week one. Crushed by the Ravens. Loss to the Texans. A lot of close games. We need that close game luck still. Don't have a buy until week 13. 
How can we improve? I'm telling you, it's going to be a big time edge rusher, but I just... There's not one to get. This is our big going for a move. A second round pick this year, two years from now, and a third this year gets us Hassan Reddick. We need a big time pass rusher, and we just landed one. He's one of the highest rated in the game, 87 overall. It's not amazing, right? But it's a big improvement. I like Miles Murphy. He's just not there yet. Hassan Reddick expedites the process, and I was willing to trade a couple picks in order to get it done. Not ideal, you know, but we needed somebody that can make a difference, and I think Hassan Reddick can be that difference. Moats with only star dev, unfortunately. Miles Murphy, 77 overall, superstar dev. Just, it wasn't getting the job done. I like Miles Murphy. I do, but just, it wasn't a great fit. Now, what I could do is move him to defensive tackle. You know what was interesting? He is 275 pounds. Aaron Donald came out and said that he was playing between 255 and 260. <laughs> just ridiculous for a defensive tackle. But he was so damn strong that it didn't seem to matter. Well, Miles Murphy is going to just be depth across the entire defensive line. And Hassan Reddick, I need him to be a big difference maker. Because that could be the one thing that really turns our, our team into, you know, a massive juggernaut is an actual pass rush. 5-3 and three looks a little bit better. Beat the Giants, which doesn't sound like much, but they're not rated all that poorly in the game. Bucks could be a win in Week 9. Would need to beat the Steelers in Week 11. The Bucks are 0-7, and, and now they're 0-8. Close win, but a win's a win. Well, we got into the playoffs. Barely. 10-7. and seven. Do you have a breakout D-line challenge? I mean, you can see our overall is great. We're developing really quickly. We've got a great team. Braden Fisk on the verge of a breakout in the playoffs, which is something I've never seen before. Here's the problem, is we're barely beating teams. I mean, we lost in Week 18, unfortunately. But we did at least make it into the playoffs. Joe Burrow, very similar year to last year or the year before. We st no running game is killing us. That's our biggest problem, probably. No running game is devastating. Jamar Chase had a killer season. Donovan Wilson was amazing. Tez Walker, T. Higgins were contributors. And then defensively, Jermaine Pratt had 163 tackles. 21 for Hendrickson. Seems like we got pressure at least. Who knows how many of those sacks came with the other team. Where Hassan Reddick was. Did we get him from the Eagles? We may have. I don't know if he changed teams before that. Seven picks for Jermaine Pratt. Oh, he's going to win Defensive Player of the Year. Unbelievably, but he's going to do it. Seven interceptions for Jermaine Pratt. Okay. Wild card round of the playoffs. I'm jumping in. <laughs> it's early. But at the same time... I want this team to be successful. If I have to jump in and see what this team can do in game, I'm going to do it. Bengals Jets from MetLife Stadium. Jets the board first, 3-0, but we answer with a touchdown to take the lead. Keeping the Jets off the lead, but they get two? They get a safety? Okay, and they take the lead, 12-10. A very bizarre game so far, but we take the lead, 17-12. Fourth quarter now. Got to keep the Jets off the scoreboard. We're doing a good job, and Dicker nails, uh, nails a field goal. Now, unfortunately... This is still a one possession game. We are only up by eight. I'd love a turnover. Wilson. What? Who is on my field? This is not my defense at all. Who is on the field? What is happening? Time out. I, I have to. I have my offense on the field. On my defense. All right. My defense is back out there now. I should have called a timeout before the snap. I mean, what a disaster. Maybe this is why my defense can't get a stop. Because my defense is my offense. We have a full team of two-way players. And Garrett, Wilson's, well, Garrett Wilson refuses to be tackled. Under a minute to play. We should almost just let him in at this point. Get the football back. And that's exactly what happens really okay with letting them score. I didn't actually do it, but they did anyway. Because if we stop them with a two-point conversion, we just win anyway. But if not, we have time to answer, get down the field, field goal wins it. 
Letting them score quickly was the move. I mean, first and goal from the one. We're going to be fine. 49 seconds. Win the game. Oh, Tez Walker's still on his feet. Barely. All that did was waste time. That was dumb. Still have two timeouts, though. Joe Burrow and all of my weapons. Wilson's a freak. Bell can actually really catch the ball to the backfield. Former receiver, we turned a running back, right? Jamar Chase down the field. Can't catch it. Kind of just couldn't make a decision quickly enough there. And down the field. Oh, he's going he's gonna to cook. He's going to cook, but Burrow's getting sacked. Third and 21. Just one timeout remaining. Jamar Chase make a play. All right, that's pretty good. <laughs> to the 45-yard line. One timeout, 26 seconds. Only the second catch of the game for Jamar Chase. Is this the same play? Might be. Bell down the field. Clear out. Jamar Chase open again. There it is. Jamar Chase gets us in a field goal range. I really want to try out Dominic Wilson, though. That's not his name. Why did I say Dominic? Don't get sacked here, Joe. His name is Donovan. Field goal wins the game. Let's not get too crazy. We're throwing to the end zone. Donovan Wilson, touchdown! It's more fun. And I don't have to worry about a missed kick. Touchdown with eight seconds to go. Jets, no time, no chance. How is this game not over? It's over. All right, 27-20 is your final. Scary wild card game, but we are moving on to the divisional. And Braden Fisk has been upgraded to star dev. All right. Braden Fisk up to star development. I guess we held the Jets to under 100 yards rushing. I think that was the game goal. But the Chiefs might be significantly tougher. We do have a higher rated team than they do. But they also went 16-1. and We're trying to hand them their second loss of the season. Walking into Burrowhead. Joe Burrow here at home in Kansas City, Missouri. Let's see if we can steal a win. Let's go. Not a good start. But we answer with a touchdown. But we know the Chiefs are going to do a lot of that today. Please score a touchdown. Nope, we're stopped. 21-7. Not out of this game yet. And our offense continues to move the ball down the field. We just are doing our very best not to finish any drive with a score. 23-10. How... Do they have the ball? It's broken. Negative three-yard rush by John Bell for a touchdown? That isn't a thing. And we didn't get any points for it. What is happening? Burrow has a passing touchdown. I mean, we just... I don't know how we lost the ball. Look at it. It says right there. Zero-yard punt return by Jeff Okuda. And then the next play was a negative three-yard rush for a touchdown, followed up by Trey Benson of the Chiefs returning a kick. Jeff Okuda returned a punt. I don't have Jeff Okuda, surely. We never got the ball on offense unless there was a safety. Did they have 21 that turned into 23 and they just call it a touchdown? But zero yard punt return by Jeff Okuda. Fourth and one on KC 39. I guess they punted the ball to our two? I, it's just, it's so confusing the way it's worded. And the Chiefs again have the ball. How do they continue to have the ball? I don't get it. Another three and out. I guess, 11-yard punt return. I mean, we, we lose the game. That's what happens next. Well, things are not looking good. Down by 21, fourth quarter. Jamar Chase should be a touchdown. But I just don't think there's enough time. And we can't get a stop. Chiefs with the touchdown. We are cooked. I mean, there's, there's just nowhere to really go with the football. It is over. It, they're just... It wasn't going to happen. I don't know. It wasn't going to happen. And the Chiefs end up winning the Super Bowl 41-35. Dak wins MVP. I need some new playbooks. If you guys have successful playbooks, let me know down in the comments section below. 
because lately whatever i'm doing just isn't working the number 24 ranked defense number 11 offense we are not lacking for playmakers our team overall is good we are just not getting it done i get here that maybe i don't have a legit running back but that shouldn't make or break the offense get going for another season this can't be how it ends it's been very disappointing so far we've obviously built a good team i don't think you could argue that surely one of the highest rated teams in the league i mean the chiefs just won a super bowl with a lower rated team than we had right we were an 89 overall at the time now down to an 87 we'll have to make a decision on amarius mims we'll have to extend dj turner jordan battle potentially orlando brown jr not a ton of free agents in here but when you see that orlando brown's going to be you know 15 million a year that brings us to you know one more player probably and it's dj turner over alex kappa is probably what it comes down to so we'll make those calls and hopefully find some more success i mean this has been just unacceptable so okay preparation for the final year took some time off this one's been taking a little while we are back to pick up the fifth year option on amarius mims to re-sign dj turner who is uh, i think affordable about five million per year on a long-term extension 19 million left jordan battle as much as depth is important i don't think that he's going to be worth the money when i need a starting left tackle and orlando brown jr isn't great do i think i can get a guard or cheaper move a marius mims to tackle where he probably should have been all along but we ended up extending Trent Brown, which, you know, I think was the right decision. However, it put us in a, a very interesting spot because I, I drafted Amarius Mims to be the next starting, you know, right tackle for us. Oh my goodness. Trent Brown has regressed down to an 81. I think Mims is going to kick out to play left tackle. That looks exactly like him if you see him in real life. Like picture perfect, spinning image there. I mean, I, I, I can't even really tell the difference between the in-game model and a real picture of him. It's incredible. But we need a guard. Reedy looks good because he's got star dev, but he's not good. Orlando Brown Jr., I'd rather have the money. I think we can get two guards and Kappa, same deal. Two guards for the price of one Orlando Brown Jr. that are, like, starter quality. And then the offense is fine. Defensively? Jermaine Pratt, of course, up to Superstar Dev. Did he win Defensive Player of the Year? Surely, right? Led the NFL in tackles and interceptions. I can... Ooh. I was going to bet that that's never been done before. I think it probably has never been done before. But, I mean, maybe a safety led the league in tackles and picks. I'm thinking maybe a Ronnie Lott. Maybe a Brian Dawkins, but... It's, it's so tough to get that many interceptions. It's kind of fluky at times. I I don't even know if either one of those guys would have led the league in picks or tackles. Brian Dawkins never had four or more than four interceptions in a season. And the most tackles he had in a season was 95 or 116 combined. Ronnie Lott did league, uh, lead the league in interceptions two seasons and tackles in 1982 with only 68. That surely can't be true. Ronnie Lott is definitely the closest that I've seen, but he didn't do it in the same season. Let me know if it's ever been done in the same season. That's what I'm shooting for. Maybe the only other guesses I would have are like Rod Woodson or, and I again, I doubt it because of the tackles there. Woodson didn't do it. Or Charles Woodson, who I again expect never did it. He did lead the league in picks twice, but never tackles, even though he had some really high tackle seasons again I, I think it'd be tough and i don't think a linebacker would have done it it's just how often does a linebacker lead the league in interceptions i mean for so many years we've seen defensive backs lead the league in picks with at least you know six or seven sometimes into the double digits i don't know that a linebacker has ever had double digit picks in a year so it's a it's an interesting thing but i just doubt it trey hendrickson up to superstar x factor though that's cool don't want to pay Alex Kappa. Jonah Jackson is so much cheaper. And, I mean, basically is good. Three-year deal, I can up the money. 
Jonah Jackson should end up signing with us. And then we need one more interior offensive lineman. Austin Corbett for a year really wouldn't be the worst. So those will be the two guard upgrades. We really could use a running back. Defensive tackle's fine. Fisk up to star dev. Murphy a superstar. And now playing D-tackle. We have Vickers. Fuller got up to star dev. The DBs are starting to look really good. Star dev for Motes, if I didn't mention it. Pass rush looks pretty good. And then offensively, we really could just use a running back. I know I've traded picks again to make things happen. I'm not going to do that again. But I don't really know that we have any way of getting an actually good running back. Tony Pollard for a year. Ty J Spears. I, bet I get Tony Pollard for a year, sure. But it's still like not an especially good player for us. We'll see what this ends up looking like. I'm expecting everyone I'm targeting to sign almost instantly. Pollard does. Jonah Jackson does. Austin Corbett does. So guard's fine. We have two starting guards now. We have our center. We have our tackles. O-line looks good. Jumps us up to an 88 overall. I'm concerned about running back. No question. Defense, as I mentioned, I think is good. Depth maybe is an issue. But we'll see what the draft looks like. Just, I'd love to get a really, really good running back, but it's just not going to happen. Here we are at the end of round two. There's a round one talent corner. This corner is just an especially stacked position in the draft in Madden. Uh, what is this, 24? If you're interested in watching MLB 24, by the way, I do upload a franchise series on my second channel, Bengal Plays. Link is down in the description, as always, and on the main channel. And I stream it on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Bengal. You want to see me play online and rage. I'm sure a lot of you guys like that. Uh, I think I have to take the corner, right? I think I have to. All right, Nick Byram. Welcome to the team. Hidden Dev, good athlete. We'll take that. 6-3 as well. I mean, that's a solid pick at the end of the second round. Gonna let the CPU handle the rest. We have multiple fourth round picks. If I was going to continue to play this out, I'm expecting this is going to be the final year. I would trade those down for future thirds, probably. Or, you know, take a shot at a player. But I think the CPU is going to know my needs and just fill out for depth. That's my expectation. We got a receiver that's not entirely helpful. Backup tight end, defensive tackle, another receiver, a left end, and a corner. But Nick Byram is a 76 overall. Pretty good. I mean, great man coverage, tackling maybe a little bit of a concern. But definitely a good player, as was the number one overall player in the class. 82 overall left tackle Lyle Sheridan. And this is what I like. When there are super juiced offensive tackles that go high in the draft. They, the, we had a pretty good run of seeing tackles go at number one overall in the draft. And now we're having an insane run of QBs. Because that's just, you know, the most valuable position. And I, I, I think it is realistic for tackles to be high rated coming out of the draft. 80 overall safety is unreal. Great corner, a running back, Warren Jowers in the first round. But we got one of the better players, right? So not super mad about that. A ton of great corners per usual. Look at all these corners. I mean, this is round two, pick 22, 77 overall. 76 overall, round two, pick 24. Same for round two, pick 25, our guy. A safety in the same range. The DBs are wild. Mostly corners, but there are some good safeties you see occasionally as well, such as this draft class. But preparing for this to be the final year, it better be. I mean, that because if it's not, it means we didn't find any success. And this team is way too good to not dominate our competition, really. But the success has not really been there. It's been frustrating. I, this team, though, it's as good as it's been. If we're bad this year... I don't know what to tell you because I think we've built a truly awesome team. 88 overall. The offense is especially stacked, but I think the defense is quite good as well. You can't really point to an area of our team and say, oh, that's a bad group. Like defensive line, because the interior isn't like unbelievably stacked, but it's good. The ends are great now with the addition of Hassan Reddick. The linebackers are more than solid. And... The defensive backs are awesome. The safeties are amazing, and the cornerbacks are really good now. So, 
They just got to go out there and do it. I and and the continued development I think is going to be important as well, for sure. But you know, I, I'm expecting minimum ten wins. That's the expectation, minimum. But ideally, it'd be a lot more in the neighborhood of at least eleven or twelve. But if you start pushing twelve wins, you're asking for a lot. How few teams win twelve games a year? One, two in a season. Sometimes more, sometimes less, obviously, but I mean, it, it's a couple, but not much more than that usually. Even with the 17-game season, winning 12 is really difficult. You see the occasional team win more than that, you know, 14 plus, but that's a crazy amazing season. Just not typical. Last year, one team in the AFC won 12 games or more. It was the Ravens with 13, and in the NFC, you had three teams who won 12. So, as, as I say, you know, not a lot can do it, but, you know, it's a, it's a zero-sum game. If somebody wins a game, somebody's got to lose a game. And, you know, as as we see some teams are especially bad, they end up being a free win, like the Panthers who went 2-15. and 15. That's also rare. We don't see a lot of teams win two games or fewer. Again, it does happen, obviously, but not that often. You know, maybe, maybe a team a year wins three or fewer, two or fewer. Two or fewer especially is obviously super rare. And I like the parody of the NFL. I mean, that's one of those things is, you know, they say any given Sunday, but you can point to the NFL and be like, well, what a nasty ankle breaker. Even with the best team in the league against the worst team in the league, the spread is typically, you know, not even double digits a lot of the time. So, you know, you expect these games to be close. These wins are hard fought. The NFL is such a, a great league. Am I am I am I a, a simp here for the NFL? What is this? A shill? Maybe so, but I mean, there's a reason we're all watching an NFL video right now. Maybe I'm not, but the rest of you, you surely are, right? You're watching this or listening to it. This football's awesome, and uh, the competitiveness and the any given Sunday aspect is is why we love it. Obviously. I'm a big college football guy too, but you know, it doesn't quite have that upper echelon of talent like the NFL does, obviously. And um, you know, you see some massive blowouts in college football. And it does happen in the NFL, obviously, but not quite as much. I do probably like college football more than the NFL right now. And I think a contributing factor in that is that Texas is finally good again, it would appear big Texas fan and uh, growing up in New Jersey, even with all my family in Texas who made me a Texas fan, uh, you know, I was a Giants fan and they, I don't know if you guys follow football very much. They haven't been so good. And that's been the trend. It's they've been so bad for so long and it's so sad. Okay, you guys know the team at this point. I like it. We've changed some things, obviously. Need a little bit more development. Miles Murphy is just going to have to be just our depth across the entire defensive line, as I mentioned. And we need the boys to show up. That's what it's going to be. We got our power back. He's a 72 overall. Surely that's not going to be bad. We are, what, an 89 overall team now after training camp. The Browns are an 81 overall team. If we have the same record at the midseason mark, the video will end abruptly. It's actually a gamble I don't like. Scratch it. Never mind. Never mind. It's back on. Uh, Brown. Oh, well, I guess we don't have to. Browns 2-5. and five, And we went 5-2. and two. Ravens undefeated right now. I would guess that one of our losses is to them. Maybe not. Donovan Wilson up to a 93 overall. Plus 3 run block. He's so good. Deep route running's never really been upgraded much, though. I think it was a 67 when we drafted him. Now it's a 70. Catching is amazing. His speed is still amazing. What is he doing wasting his time at Vanderbilt? Smart guy, I guess. All right. Playoff time. We should be in them, and we are. We won 13. So did the Ravens, 13-4. We just won a shootout against the Steelers, 40-38. to Goodness. Joe Burrow, very good year, 4,500 yards, 39 touchdowns this time to eight picks. Rushing. John Bell got better. Still bad. Still bad but better. He's just not a running back is the problem. I know the casuals will tell you, oh, he had a thousand yards. He must've been good. 
This number is not good. 3.9 yards per carry. He fumbled five times. That's okay. We won anyway. Donovan Wilson is a freak. 1,100 yards receiving, 12 touchdowns. Tez Walker was amazing. Jamar Chase was a solid contributor, and so was T. Higgins. And then defensively, I like that we're not getting as many tackles. It means we, you know, weren't stuck on the field as much. We were getting off the field. Four double-digit TFL guys are starting defensive line, and then Logan Wilson had nine. Sacks, Reddick 13, nine and a half for Hendrickson, five for Fisk. Interceptions, five for Trevor Motes, four for Turner and Cam Taylor. Britt, our DBs were going crazy. This is what I wanted to see. The team actually come out and play well, and we saw that. Did the Ravens beat us, though? Is that a team I really have to worry about? We lost to the Browns in week one. The Ravens crushed us in week four. 49ers crushed us in week 11. And then we lost to the Ravens again in week 15. So 0-2 against the Ravens this year. I'd love a third chance. You know what they say, third time's the charm. Cam Taylor Britt going to get a slight upgrade here. Man coverage, easy big boost with the slot upgrade. Should be a plus two or three, I would bet. And it's a plus three. Cam Taylor Britt going into this game looking real good. And I'm jumping in. Wild card round against the Colts. Their QB cannot be Anthony Richardson anymore. As we saw him with the Jets. They are an 84 overall team. They have Leatu Latu, who is superstar X-Factor now. Good player. I think Leatu Latu, if he stays healthy, he's going to be great. Big fan of his. All right, up 7-0 early. I love this Bengals orange. If you guys don't know, peek behind the curtain here. Or maybe not the Bengals logo itself, but the, the color right behind it, which is very similar. The reason my name is Bengal is I chose my name back in 2010 or 2011. And I was in the Call of Duty community and I needed, you know, a gamer tag. And I really like tigers. That's part of, uh, you know, I'm, I'm sure why I like the color orange and vice versa, right? I just, there's something about it. I love the color. It's probably why I like tigers so much growing up. And I chose to name myself after a tiger. And I think somebody's name already had tiger in it. I'm like, I'll mix it up a little bit. And, or that I was buddies with. And I went with Bengal. Bengal Tiger. And then, lo and behold, I start doing NFL content and uploading Madden videos. I was doing Madden videos already at the time. Or a little bit after that in 2012. But I chose the name about a year before that. So that's backstory. I didn't explain it in an exhilarating way. But that's pretty much it. Like Tigers. Bengal Tiger. I'm Bengal now. Boom. Doing Madden. <laughs> Like the Giants. Well, actually, I hate the Giants, but they are my favorite team. But they bring me more pain than anyone else. Shootout last time we played the Steelers. Final week of the season. Hopefully, we can take them out easier this time around. Like that helmet. And my saturation's bumped up a little bit. But that helmet color in particular looks so good. It's just that, you know, we all have different... Uh, perceptions of, of color, right? Maybe slightly. Or, or like how we feel about it. That's why, you know, everybody has different favorite colors and whatnot. As we are crushing the Steelers. Uh, a very interesting, like, like, shower thought, like, or high thought, as they would say. Think about how you can have absolutely no con or confirmation that what I see for the color orange is what you see, and same with any other color. It's just, if it's all the same, like, how your eye views it right and let's say like an orange right if we just say oh well that's you know it's that's the color orange everyone sees that that's why it's called that but if my orange for you is actually what most people perceive to be green i don't know I, am i <laughs> this is too crazy it's just something interesting to think about for me that like you can't be a hundred percent certain that we all see color the same way you know, if someone's colorblind, obviously, it's a little bit different. But what's to say that the color that I see for green, you know, every green means go. What if that, for you, is how I see blue? I, I know this is an insane conversation. I'm going to move on here. Like, what is bro yapping about? I, if this was on TikTok, instantly. But it is a good question. What am I yapping about? This is unrelated. We are about to play in the AFC Championship. 
A lot on the line. Years and years of work has led us to this moment. We get an AFC Championship game against Anthony Richardson. We played him last year, and I think we won. And then we got shut down by the Chiefs, if I recall. This time we have home field advantage. Let's take him out. We've been just running through people this season, which is nice. Although the Jets find the end zone first, and ooh, I was going to say likely second as well. Now it's 10 to 7, but we take the lead 14 7 going to the half. 17 10. I said 7, that was my, my fault the first time. 24 17 now. And just one more score is going to do it, and that is it. 38 17 is your final as the Bengals will move on to the Super Bowl. This is one of those teams that has never won the Super Bowl. They've played in multiple, of course, losing to the Rams. I think they lost to the 49ers back in the uh, either late 80s or early 90s when Ken Anderson was quarterback, I'm sure. But we have a chance to avenge all of those losses. We have a chance to be Super Bowl champions and bring the Lombardi back to Cincinnati. What a Super Bowl. It's Vikings, Bengals. Two teams that have experienced heartbreak as much as any other franchise. Two teams that have never won a Super Bowl. Both of these teams have lost multiple, although I think the Vikings have lost double the amount of Super Bowls that the Bengals have. No death trade upgrades on offense. Wish Bell got something, but mostly looks the same, just slightly upgraded. And then defensively, Moats has been upgraded to Superstar Dev. Hassan Reddick, I think, was X-Factor. Ooh, Lowry. Got another star or better development corner. Probably just star. And probably the same for Nick Byram as well. I do want to check, though. I never do check. People, you know, sometimes think maybe I look. But it never really changes much. I, I start the Hidden Dev player a lot of the time anyway. Just hoping it is something, but... I do like to know. It doesn't change anything, but I, I do like to know now. So just star dev doesn't, again, change anything, but it's cool to see. And I wanted to change this on Reddick to Unstoppable Force. I feel like it's better. I have no real reason for believing that. I just feel it. And I also feel like we play better when Defensive Rally is equipped. So throwing that on Hassan Reddick and let's win a Super Bowl. We're a little unhinged here at the end of this one. I recognize it. I won't apologize. Vikings Bengals here in Tampa. Raymond James Stadium. It's a decent stadium. I like the pirate ship. I've been here. I saw maybe the worst NFL game in history. It was Raiders Bucks. He set the record for most penalties in a game back in maybe 2016. Oh, it was terrible. But we are in the second half now. Very close Super Bowl. 20 to 13. We have the lead. Vikings are losing it. They got Jaden Daniels. And they are down by multiple touchdowns with three and a half minutes to go. They're going to need something quick. Got to cover Justin Jefferson. Big hit, Logan Wilson. No fumble. I'll tell you what. Logan Wilson, he's going to be a forgettable player, I think. Like, down the line. But, man, he's been a big-time playmaker. Especially in big games for the Bengals as well. I like Logan Wilson. I just don't remember, or I don't, I don't know if I'm going to remember him, like, 10 years down the line. Although, I I mean, if I can remember Ray Malaluga, I can probably remember Logan Wilson. Although, Ray Malaluga was a really good college player. Logan Wilson from Wyoming didn't have quite the same prestige. I don't know. I do, I mean, if I remember Dwayne Gratz, not a Bengal, but just a random player. Jonathan Banks. This Cam Taylor Britt can't reel in the game ending pick. I got, I got to remember Logan Wilson at that point. All right, never mind. I'll remember Logan Wilson. Trust me. I'll, I'll remember. Quiz me in 10 years. Say, who is the Bengals linebacker out of Wyoming? Or even say, who is the great Wyoming linebacker? And I would say, Chad Luma? And they would go, no. I will, um... Oh, there's a Wyoming linebacker in the draft this year. I can't remember his name. Easton... Easton has a last name, surely. Easton shoots. Is it Easton Gibbs? Did I just think of it? It is Easton Gibbs. All right. Yeah, I liked him at the combine. I hadn't heard of him before that, but he looked good in the drills, ran pretty well. And uh, is, is fun to watch on tape. Not perfect, 
but uh, is fun. So we'll see if he ends up being anything but another Wyoming NFL product. You like to see it from a small state and small school. So, I mean, Josh Allen obviously came from there. Some of you, I'm sure, are screaming, but I am not talking about quarterbacks. I'm talking about linebackers. Although I'm sure if Josh Allen wasn't a QB at that size, dude could be a linebacker. Either, you know, your Anthony Barr role, he's certainly athletic enough, or as a pass rusher, he'd be pretty sick. Lobbing it into traffic. Intercept it. Make it interesting. Come on. I'm launching it to him. They're not doing anything. Let me get the ball to Donovan Wilson. Oh, he's going to be wide open. Donovan Wilson! Hurdle! Nope. God, the hurdle doesn't do anything this year. They don't even jump with it. We will get a Donovan Wilson touchdown here. High point. Double coverage. Not even close. I'm telling you, the ball is only going to Donovan Wilson. That's who's getting it. Give him a chance. High point. Go up and get it! He drops it. He had a chance there. Great throw from Burrow. Let's run it back. Wilson might be getting doubled here. And I'll tell you what. We're going to throw the ball up anyway. He's going to get doubled, surely. Can I move over Jamar Chase? Can I kick John Bell out? Can't move anybody. Up in the air. Donovan Wilson. Not even a jump ball, but we'll take the touchdown. <laughs> Just wide open. They gave him way too much space. But we traded up for him in the top five. And now he scored a Super Bowl touchdown. And then I think was about to run into the wall. Maybe CTE kicking in. Hate to see it. But superstar type player. X-Factor to be exact. And he comes up clutch. 33 to 13 could be your final if things go or don't go well here. Throwing toward the end zone, nearly caught by Urban. All right. Turnover ends the game. Pretty much anything ends the game. Down goes Jaden Daniels. That's number 64, Vickers. 355 pounds, a man up the middle. Fourth and 11 game on the line, obviously. They're down by a billion. This thing's over. Good luck. Can't keep up with Jordan Addison in coverage with a linebacker, Jermaine Pratt. But that will be the Super Bowl. 33 to 20 is your final as Joe Burrow has finally won it all. I say finally. At this point, he's like, what, 30 years old in the game? Is this 2027? Probably 30? Something, if he's not 30, he's very close to it. 29 or 31. But that is the game as Jaden Daniels, <laughs> number 22 with the default player model. Super happy for Joe Burrow, of course. Two big time transfer QBs that won Heisman's at LSU. There you go. Took me a long time to make that connection, but that is going to do it. Joe Burrow. Admiring his reflection in the Lombardi. I can't blame him. That's the video. Appreciate you guys. Thanks so much for watching. Press like for more cat cam. And I'll see you in the next one. Take it easy.